Welcome back everybody, High Tech Lab here. Today I'm working on a pretty cool project. I'm building my own battery monitoring system using some automation components and I'll go over this here in more detail. On the left I have a Nissan Leaf battery pack. This is a 14S pack. I have some relay boards from Automation Direct and these are wired in a very special way which I'll go over here in a second. I have my meter tied into these relay boards and to control all this I have a click PLC and 24 volt DC to DC converter as well as a HMI panel here in the background just running its demo screen because I haven't uploaded any program yet. I'm going to be able to use these 16 relays to select positive and negative between these cells and I can then feed that signal into the PLC which will convert it into a digital signal and I can use this to do quite a few different things with the ladder code. So I have all of these cables numbered 1 through 17 and these are going to connect onto the battery pack. Now this is a 14S battery pack, but I have this set up because I plan to use this with some CALB cells in a different application. So I want to have it ready to go for a 16S configuration. In this case of this leaf pack, I'm only going to use 14 out of 16 cells. So I can just leave those disconnected and I'll write my programming for the PLC accordingly. Now none of this is hooked up right now. I kind of wanted to give an overview, but without further ado, we can connect these zip link cables onto these expansion modules and into the PLC and wire up the PLC with some power and we'll go from there. Now this is kind of just a test run. My plan is to build an enclosure for this HMI panel that'll look kind of like this. I'm going to build it out of 18 gauge 304 series stainless steel I'll go over that more in later videos, but you get the main concept for now. So I've gone ahead and connected all these wires to my battery, and then I have two extras over here, and those would be if I had 15 and 16th cells, they would just go on the cell positives. Now a couple things to go over. These relay boards have fuses on every single one of the relay's common ports. Now I wired this so the common port of the last relay goes into the normally closed of the next relay, and then that common port goes to the next normally closed. So essentially what I've created is they often call this a multiplexer and you can do these in a tree configuration. As you can see on the screen here, there's a couple different graphics and you can configure them in different ways, but I've just configured this pretty much as a single tree. So there's the last common port out and if I engage any of these relays, it disengages all the relays down the line. So I can't engage two relays and have a dead short across the battery. And then these relay modules also have fuses and I've installed five amp fuses in every single one of those. And that's gonna make sure even if I do make a mistake in code that those can blow and prevent me from nuking this entire array. Now for testing purposes, I'm gonna use my Fluke 116 on the output here. Now I'm doing that because eventually I'll be sending the power into the PLC directly, but the analog to digital converter in this PLC can only accept zero to five volts. Now these cells at a full charge would be at around 4.15 volts, so that's okay, but if I mess up in my development process and accidentally turn on the first cell and instead of going to the next positive, skip it and have two cells, now I have eight volts and I could cause damage to this PLC. So it's going to take some very careful coding to make sure that doesn't happen. Alternatively, there's some electronic circuitry I could put to where if I had over 5 volts, it would possibly blow a fuse or something like that. But I'm not going to get into that quite yet. I'm mainly trying to do this to prove to myself the concept here will work and that I can monitor each and every cell. And the reason I'm doing this is I don't like BMS systems that have all the power of the system going through the BMS. In my case, I control my inverters in my main off-grid system with another PLC. So now I can plug these in via Ethernet. They all communicate together. I can run through all my relays and check every single cell's voltage and then use that information to know whether or not I need to turn off the inverters or not. And then I don't need a relay that's going to have to be able to handle the three to 400 amp surge that those inverters can produce. I've also not been able to find any BMS system that I truly like and I really like the active cell balancers that I have because they're extremely efficient and they don't waste very much power. And in your average off-grid system, not wasting power is very desirable. And we'll get more into that later on, but for now I have this all wired up. 
Now I just need to write some code and connect on my DC to DC converter. And to run these relays on this PLC for now, I have a DeWalt 20 volt battery and I'm just gonna tie on to the B plus and B minus. Now this is only for the testing. In my actual case, the 48 volt input to this DC to DC converter would come off the batteries. But in this case of the leaf cells, I don't really wanna pull power off them because I don't really need to. I can use the DeWalt battery that's easily recharged instead of having to get out my 48 volt charger. Now these cells are at a low state of charge from my capacity test that I just did. That video will be coming soon to the channel. So these cells should be right around the same voltage because I bottom balanced them. But with this board, I'm gonna be able to write the code and display on the touchscreen panel each and every cell's voltage. So that way we can check if we are still right at a good bottom balance voltage. Now this PLC's accuracy is actually really good. It's got a 12-bit analog to digital converter, which means we can get a 0.01 volt reading on these cells and be pretty accurate. And that's plenty good enough to check if these cells are staying in balance. In theory, if everything goes as planned, every single one of these relays should be able to fire through and we should get the exact same voltage on all of them. But if we're running a battery pack that has used cells that can be out of balance, that may not be the case. And what I can do is write some code into the PLC so that if one cell is coming out behind, it can throw an error on the HMI display. And we can know if we need to take a look deeper at any of these cells. So I have this all connected to this leaf battery pack and I've uploaded some code to the PLC and matching code to the HMI and have gone through and fixed quite a few of the bugs here. I'm gonna show you what this does and how it pulls these cell voltages and you can hear some of the noise it makes. It's actually quite impressive. So as it goes, it's showing the independent cell voltage and while this looks like it's bouncing around quite a bit, this PLC pulls in the voltage quite quickly as compared to a digital multimeter. I'm able to then write those values to these numbers here that you can see on the touch screen and that tells me each and every cell voltage throughout the pack. I've stopped the cycle and I'm gonna readjust the camera angle so you can get a look at these LEDs and really see what's going on with this relay board. So I've gone handheld with the camera and I'm gonna go ahead and start this cycle and you can see over here there's relays on these boards and they really go quite fast through all the cells as you can see. If I get a close up on this touch screen you can actually see the voltages update as it goes through the pack. It's actually quite impressive how quickly it can pull this voltage. Now this relay clicking could be somewhat annoying and you obviously wouldn't want this in somewhere that's a living space. But the point of this system is I don't wanna be pulling on these relays all the time and have them clicking nonstop because they do have a mechanical life of a million cycles. And if I run at this pace, we can wear through relays pretty quickly. In my first version of code, I had this set up so it pulled one cell and then released and then pulled the next cell and then released and so on and so forth. And the thing I thought of is since I wired from the common port of the first relay to the normally closed of the second relay, even if I kept the first relay in a closed state, it wouldn't matter because the second relay would disconnect that normally closed contact as soon as it's energized. So this is actually a pretty safe setup. And I'm just using the analog to digital converter of the Click PLC's IO, and it actually is working quite impressively. My next step is gonna to be to take this to the off-grid ranch and install it on my CALB cells and see how those are performing at different state of charges. So I've shut this off to be a little less annoying, but my idea here was I wanted to use the Click PLC interface so that way I can easily install it on our ranch and be able to monitor it from these touchscreen panels anywhere. And if I build that stainless steel box I talked about earlier, I can just mount this HMI in that and place it anywhere that there's an internet hookup and be able to monitor the cells in that fashion. It's really quite cool and I look forward to making future videos on this. But for now, I'm gonna leave it at that. And if you guys have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments below. If you're new to the channel, be sure to hit the subscribe button. And if you don't have the bell icon on already, go ahead and turn that on now. If you like this video, you can certainly help the channel out quite a bit by leaving a thumbs up. And other than that, I'll see you guys in the next video. I sure look forward to it. See you guys later, bye-bye.